The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. Hi, I'm Pat Halpin, and welcome to Cable Visions Meet the Leaders, the show that brings you to the heart of local government. Here today is Brookhaven Receiver of Taxes, Lou Marcoccia. Lou, it's good to have you back on Meet the Leaders. Hi, Pat. It's good to be back. Now, uh, Brookhaven is uh, Suffolk County's largest town, uh, both in population and geography. In fact, it's so big that you could fit all of Nassau County in Brookhaven and still have room left over. So that just gives people a, a, a sense of the scale. As tax receiver, Aside from collecting the taxes, what are your primary responsibilities? I think primarily it really is to uh, uh, process checks and, and really to collect the taxes. Mm -hmm. That's really the primary responsibility. But beyond that, I think we have two additional responsibilities. One, we have to make sure that the monies uh, that we receive to, uh, to operate uh, the department is, is spent correctly. And two, we need to provide customer service. So you have a private sector background. You had a very successful computer consulting company. It's a very, very competitive business. You were extraordinarily successful. As you, uh, as, as you come in, came into your job as an elected official, as a tax receiver, you're really looking at it through the prism of, of a businessman that's very customer-centric, aren't you? A absolutely, because in business it's, it's about uh, 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 expenses, it's about revenue, and obviously government is, is not about revenue specifically, and it's about service, and we really attack uh, uh, those two issues. And, and let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you were to examine over the last five years the actual budget to operate the department from 2006 to 2010 actuals, we are almost 2% less. In real dollars? In real dollars. And if you discount less. that for inflation, it's even more. It's even more. And a, another interesting uh, point about that, that is the best performance of any department in Brookhaven Town. In the largest town in, in New York State, it's the best performance of any department in Brookhaven Town. Now, you collect um, property taxes from literally every taxable parcel in the town. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of properties. It's about 180,000 properties, which amounts to about $1.350 billion. In, in revenue. So in, that, in that, revenue. that gets dispersed, so people it, understand, to the school districts, to the special districts, to the county, uh, to the library. You collect it correct, for every correct. taxing entity. What have you done to, to make sure that you're still able to do the job, do it effectively? I mean, there are senior citizens that will show up literally the day, final day taxes are due because they want to hold on to their money to, to pay their taxes in person. If you deal with mortgage companies and banks, uh, what have you done to make sure that service hasn't been adversely effective, affected as you, as you reduce uh, your overhead? Well, there's really uh, two things. And in order to, and I've been really very blessed, the previous tax receivers, like any organizations, they really left me with a good department. Mm -hmm. And whenever you take over a, a new department, there's always opportunities to do some other things. And what we've done was really automate our operations. Uh, and some of the things that, that we did was uh, our tax rolls. Uh, we used to produce 90,000 pages, two copies on a tax roll. A lot of ink, a lot of time. Now we place it on a land server, basically on a DVD. Mm -hmm. And so things like that. We are going to be the first town in Suffolk uh, County to have our exact duplicate copy of the tax bill online. So if somebody says, I need a copy of my tax bill, boom, they go to your site, type in and you know, they their type information. In their, exactly, the information, and they can actually print it at home. Why is that important? For a few reasons. Uh, and before I say that, we actually been working on state enabling legislation, which has been passed. Mm -hmm. And I was proud to say, I believe we're the only town in New York State that, that uh, uh, passed a resolution to opt into the program that will allow us not to physically mail the tax mm -hmm. bills or the receipts, but to allow that to be retrieved online if our customers, and when I say customers, our taxpayers, choose to do that. And that really does uh, two things. Over the last couple of years, we examined where are most of our phone calls coming from. And a large majority of, of the phone calls 
and the faxes. And, and we respond to 50 emails a day, hundreds and thousands of requests, and, and the majority of that is a request for their receipt of their tax bill. Yes. So if I'm able to have that information, which is an exact duplicate, which will be available in about a month or two, mm -hmm. available online 22 hours a day, seven days a week, I reduce the number of phone calls I receive, I reduce the number of emails I, I receive, and access and information is available to our customers. And why this is important, think about if we had everybody's email uh, address in, in, in Brookhaven Town. What happens if there was an emergency? Think about yeah. texting, think about pinging a specific community because it was an issue. Right. And you get it on your cell phone. And so it's clearly it's a transformation in how you do business. You, you examine what activities you need to address use enabling technology to make that happen, you reduce costs, and you really are literally really doing more with less and not really disrupting uh, our service. And so you can do that, and that's, so I took a business approach, mm -hmm. I looked at what was the critical areas, the bottlenecks, where can I improve service, how can I improve service, so we actually cut by being smart about it and good management techniques, and we use technologies that complemented the management processes that we implemented. Now, what was the reaction of your employees? As you know, in any organization, when they go through leadership change, you have uh, folks that say, hey, I'm glad you're here. I've been trying to do some of these things for a while. You seem receptive to these ideas. And then you get others who say, ah, that isn't the way we did it. Let's, uh, you know, why is he making us do it this way? How do you transform an organization that had a way of doing things uh, to one that is now literally taking advantage of, uh, of the expertise that you bring to the job. Now, it would, be, it would be very easy for me to walk in and say, well, I'm the department head and this is what I want done and we're gonna do this next week. I, I really don't uh, take that approach. I really call them my staff members. This is what I wanna do. This is what, how I think we can do it but I want your input. Right. So I think you really make them part of the process. There were some things I wanted to do uh, uh, that didn't make sense because mm -hmm. we had that interaction. And so the line managers that had to actually execute, participate in the process, and we did make changes. So we all had a stake in being successful. And I must tell you, I didn't get a lot of, a lot of pushback. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm really, again, I think the previous tax receivers did a wonderful job in giving me a very good department and I'm really thankful for that. But the fact that you took a hard look at the, at the work and looked at the process and, and, and figured out you know, where, the, you know, where it could be improved uh, goes to your training from the private sector. Because how many times were you brought in on a job with a, with a business and they said, we know we gotta automate, we know we've gotta improve our systems, but we don't know how to do that. We need your help to, to, uh, to work through this and come up with the best solution. And that's why you have to think strategically, act tactically, uh, and, and just very specific. And I think I talked about this last time, Pat. First things I, uh, I did when I got there was I barcoded the mailers that we did. That saved us about 25% yes. on postage. Now, we had to do a little bit of work, but we did it, and we're saving the taxpayers. You got a big return on that. About 20 25% year in and year out. It's things like that that you can do that are immediate, and there are other things that are more strategic that takes you a, a, a longer period of, of time. So I was blessed with a very good staff, and like I had an opportunity to bring it to a, another level. And, and I'm really proud that I could say, you know, we're the first town uh, in Suffolk County to produce the tax bills online. Uh, I'm, I'm we're the first town in, in New York State, I believe, that passed a resolution mm -hmm. to, op, to opt in. And these are the things that, that I really promised uh, uh, our customers when I ran a, a couple of years ago that we would do. It. Automate, save money, and, and clearly we, we, we did that. All right, well, we have to take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about how you've taken your expertise and applied it to other town departments because, as they say sometimes, no good deed goes unpunished. So if you're successful in the tax receiver's office, I understand the town wanted to help you with other with other things that, are, that they needed to have addressed. Stay with us, meet the leaders, we'll be right back.
You know, people always ask me, Susie, where can I keep my money so that it's 100% safe? I tell them, look for this or this. NCUA ensures the deposits that you put into a credit union up to $250,000 per account. The same amount FDIC insures at banks. And did you know, a new law makes this coverage limit permanent. NCUA, FDIC, virtually identical. Nice jacket. Learn more at ncua.gov. Debt Counseling Corporation is a nonprofit organization which helps consumers like you learn how to pay down their debt. Call us at 888-354-6332 to speak with one of our certified credit counselors free of charge and learn how to take the pain out of paying down your debt. Let us help you on your way to a brighter tomorrow. Welcome back to Cable Visions. Meet the leader sitting down with Brooke Haven, receiver of taxes, Lou Marcoccio. Lou, uh, you talked about how you used your background, your experience as a, as a computer technology consultant, how you applied that in business to your job as tax receiver. But I understand that the town board, the supervisor, uh, Mark Lesko, came to you and said, we need to apply this same approach to other aspects of town government. Tell us about uh, some of your projects that you've been working on sure. that go way beyond your job as receiver of taxes. Yeah, what happened was, I, you know, I didn't know the new supervisor, but I certainly uh, uh, met him in a hallway and I, and I told him, I said, look, is there any way I could be helpful? Uh, we, we both want to serve the public. And so every once in a while, I would see the supervisor in a hallway and I would say, I would say to him, Mark, on this issue, I think maybe you should do this. Mm -hmm. So one day, uh, and he was dead just a couple of months, he came to me and said, I have this idea. I want to start up an efficiency and revenue group, and I want you to chair the group. And I found that to be very uh, intriguing. Uh, we had uh, another discussion, uh, really not a long discussion, and I said, yeah, I I'd like to take that on. And the only condition that basically we had uh, that I would run it independently. Right. That I would. Uh, so you wouldn't be micromanaged I would be by micromanaged. the supervisor That's or somebody correct. else. And I promised them that it would be, I would take a business view yeah. uh, of the activity and there'd be really no interference. So did you define some overarching goals? Because as you know, something like that could be so open ended uh, that you spend all your time on things that really don't matter. How did you decide how you were going to focus this revenue and efficiency operation? The, the initial Analysis, thing was really. the supervisor thought I would produce a big report at the end. Yeah. And I told him, no, Mark, as we go through the process, we will be implementing the recommendation. That's smart. That we would not be a blue ribbon committee, spend a year, because I made a commitment for one year. The supervisor asked me, I think it would probably be a year, and I said, yes, I'll give you one year. Let's do it in a year. So he had initially thought that it would be a blue ribbon, come back with recommendations, and say, this is what I think you should do. And, and so I went back to him and said, that's not going to work. The approach that I see is every time we run across an activity, we would actually implement it. If and when we needed a town board approval, we would come to, to the town board at that time. So I wanted this to be a concrete, deliverable, not a blue ribbon, to produce a nice fancy book, do some photo ops, but nothing would happen. And have it sit on a Correct. shelf somewhere. Correct. So you wanted to have some early successes and show that this, that, that this was really for real. Correct. Uh, correct. So we, we took, we, we took mm -hmm. that on. And, and over that one year in 2010, uh, as a matter of fact, we just uh, 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 published a, a press release. We were able to save uh, uh, real dollars. Real, no voodoo, voodoo math, <laughs> real dollars, eight and a, over eight and a half million dollars. How'd you do that? A uh, couple things. I looked at 